So I did want to ask you, and I'm not going to hard press you to take a stance, um, but I'm interested to know that since you came out of that camp, and I feel like I'm hearing tones of this in what you're saying, have you moved all the way over to cessationism? Good question. Really good question. I'll answer. Yeah, I've moved to, you can call it that. I, I refer to my view on the gifts of the spirit, the miraculous gifts like healing and tongues and miracles and interpretation of tongues and prophecy as non-normative. What do I mean by that? Well, in my eschatology, my view of the end times, I know, and most Christians would agree with this, that there is going to be a resurgence in latter days of signs and wonders, obviously, you're going to have the two witnesses, which I believe are, you know, not figurative or symbolic, I would be more of a premillennial guy that views the tribulation as a literal seven years. And, and I believe there'll be great revival and signs and wonders that happen. And, and that'll all reappear and reemerge, rightfully so. And you'll have the Antichrist, and you'll have false signs and wonders and the spirit of the Antichrist at work and all of that happening. Um, so when I say non-normative, what I mean is during this era, I believe that when you look at what the Bible describes as the gifts of healing and miracles and tongues and interpretation of tongues and the prophetic, well, you see prophecy as 100% accurate. Not people prophesying Trump would be president and then he didn't <laughs> apologize. Major prophets, like prophets out of Bethel, like Chris Vallotton and these guys, and I know some of them apologized, I get it, but brother, you and I know that's not prophecy. Yeah. Biblical prophecy is accurate. Um, the gift of healing or the gift of teaching, the gift of administration, the gift of mercy. When you have a spiritual gift, it's been given. Mm -hmm. You can operate in your gift. If it's a spiritual gift given by the Holy Spirit sovereignly, you operate in that gift. Like if you come to my house and I haven't brushed my teeth yet, there's a good chance I'll still exhort you. I will mm -hmm. preach. I will teach. Yeah. Um, it's wired into my, my spiritual gifting. I don't need a lot of, like, it's been given. The Holy Spirit took residence in me when he saved me and gave me a gift. If I had the gift of healing, well, then I would wield that gift in operation like Christ, like the apostles. I'd walk around and say, silver and gold have I none. That which I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Let's go walk. And people would immediately walk. I'd clear a hospital room every day. I would not ever have needed to go to crusades with my uncle and line people up and do, use music and wave a jacket and weird stuff. You would just heal people. Mm -hmm. um, so I view those gifts literally as things that are wielded and tongues, known languages. This is like not even argued that much with major scholars, known languages. So can somebody in the jungles of Papua New Guinea be given the ability by God to speak in a language they've never learned. Sure. God is the sovereign giver of his gifts. I'll never say he can't do that because you can't say that biblically, but that person needs to come back to, you know, America speaking that language or somebody goes to China and, you know, they need to do it at will. Like Paul said, I think God, I speak in tongues more than all of you. He was wielding that gift constantly and then had to tell the people at Corinth, like quit getting arrogant. Yeah. Why? No one was being arrogant because they babbled like, you know, she, blah, 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 all that stuff, like tongues people say today. They were getting arrogant because they were wielding the incredible ability to speak in languages they had never learned and spreading the gospel. And people were understanding and people are interpreting and it's explosive revival. You can get a little puffed up over that. And he reprimands them. Uh, the ability to do miracles. What is a miracle? A miracle is defined as that which defies the laws of nature. It's when God miraculously intervenes with his own creation, when water turns to wine, when Moses splits the Red Sea, when there's an axe head floating in water, when you know, they just decide that they can call down fire from heaven. These are things that are miraculous. Well, I don't remember the last time anybody split the, the Red Sea or the Pacific Ocean. I don't, I'm sure God does miracles. I would believe that. But the ability for someone to wield that would not be caught on, you know, it's not the YouTube video that Bethel puts out with the glory cloud. It's not Todd White pulling on people's shoes on the street. No offense to anyone who wants to, you know, believe that stuff. It's real miracles. And so, 
yeah, I, I through study and seminary, I was very careful and very slow to come to the, some of those conclusions because I didn't want to swing to the other, the other extreme. And I was even very cautious, concerned about reading, you know, John MacArthur stuff for a while when I first got saved. I was like, oh, that guy doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit and all, all the caricatures that people will say. And so I decided to let the Bible speak. And so I studied the gifts of the Spirit and what they actually are. Then I looked at the world we live in and thought, and the world I grew up in and thought, that ain't it. So is it happening? Hey, God can do great and mighty things. Yes, sure he could. But is the body of Christ wielding these gifts at large in a normative fashion? No, because just like fantasy football, right? Everybody gets a quarterback. Everybody gets a wide receivers. Everyone gets kicker. Everyone. So if these are the gifts given to the body, then everyone would, we'd be seeing healers all over the place. Mm -hmm. Somebody would be like, you'd have a healer in your church or uh, a prophet among, and these would be normal things that we see across the board. And so I believe people can and should pray the prayer of faith. I believe that the elders should lay hands on the sick and could pray for people brought to them. Certainly we see that in James. I believe that people should definitely uh, seek out God's miraculous work in their life in ways that further the gospel. I had one brother who's a missionary and they were about to preach the gospel. There's a huge storm coming and they were asking God to do a miracle and to divert the storm. Like, I don't mind who, who would ever mind that pray? Yes. Yeah. Pray and implore God to move mightily, but we need to be very careful um, about saying, you know, we, I got the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. Well, then you better go wield it. Like I preach nonstop all the time. And like Ryan leads and teaches nonstop all the time. Let's go wield your gift, go do it. And then declare the gospel through it. So I landed there. I, I don't mind the word cessationism, but it's not my favorite word to use because everyone's like, oh, you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Because that's, you know, in ignorance, a lot of people will think that. Yeah. I believe yeah. that the signs and wonders gifts are not normative today. And most certainly are not evidence of salvation and required for salvation, like tongues and things like that. And that when we see those gifts operate again, we're going to see them match the text. And there'll be no denying. And here's the last thing I'll say on that. There won't be a false gospel associated with them. Hmm. That's the part that people don't often think of. You can say my uncle healed you all you want. He preached a false gospel. That's not faithfulness. You can say that, you know, this person or that person, you've seen this or you've seen that. These gifts won't be associated with a false gospel. And so in the last days, when we see a resurgence of these things, then I would just say this, you're going to see faithfulness and fidelity to the true gospel. And you will see an exact match when someone says, thus saith the Lord, and it is powerful and prophetic and real. Or they say, be healed in Jesus name. And there's no choir and no white jacket and, you know, Rodeo Drive shopping spree to, to, you know, for the fancy shoes that you're wearing while you're knocking people over, it is going to be the real deal gift of healing. If that makes sense, that'd be my position, man. Yeah. I, uh, I find myself in the same boat, you know, I, I would call it soft cessationism, I guess you could say where, and you're right that a lot of people would say that cessationists don't believe in the Holy spirit. The one that I constantly heard, I became a soft cessationist in a charismatic church and nonstop. I'd hear the you're putting God in a box line. Mm. Um, and to me, that just doesn't, I'm not saying that he can't, and I don't think you are either. I'm just saying I, we, it, it's not normative. Like you said, God could turn all the grass in the world purple tomorrow. And I'm, I'm saying that he probably won't. And that doesn't mean that I'm putting God in the box. I'm saying that's just probably not going to happen. When people um, say that, I often will think, you know, God did put himself in a box. It's called the Bible. He yeah. Put himself right there for you to know him. And he spoke and he's clear and his pattern isn't turning all the grass in the world purple. So you can, you can surmise faithfully, you know, it's not really God's pattern. Yeah. And then honestly, throughout all eras of history and even the entire Bible, did you know there's not miracles throughout the entire Bible? Someone's going to get really mad at me right now. Yeah. There, there are eras of time in which you see the miraculous, but David, what David was David, a healer. was David, a faith healer, King David. No. Did he split the sea? Did he do, no. Did Saul did, you know, pick, but you see Elijah and Elisha experience incredible things, the prophets of God. And someone say, Oh, well, that's because David was a King. 
Okay, that's fine. You can make that argument. But in the end, not every hero of the faith was doing miracles. And in yeah. different eras, you see explosive miracles. Was there anyone walking around like Jesus, healing the sick and casting out demons when he came on the scene? Not a ton. And that's where, you know, John the Baptist was doing some great things. And, but there were forerunners prophesying of this one to come. There clearly are different moments in history. So even now, you know, what's God's pattern? Well, God's pattern is working mightily through his word and through preaching and in the lives of his people. His pattern is to build the church and his pattern is not turning grass purple all over the world. So we, you can make statements that are faithfully in line with God's nature. Christians are going to suffer. That's in line with the word of God. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Hey, they hated me first. They're going to hate you too. That's consistency. We can look to those patterns and not necessarily get sucked up into all this other stuff. 